What's happening, y'all? This is Todd Wilson with another episode of Elevate Your Game. Today, we are blessed to have a college ex-pro, but now more of a coach, uh, coach for the Tem Minnesota Timberwolves, Mr. Chris Hines. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? All the way from H-Town, uh, originally yeah. Minnesota now. Uh, and thank you for coming up on this uh, hot summer California day with the traffic and everything. Yeah, yeah, man. No, appreciate you having me. Appreciate <laughs> Absolutely. you having me. We love to start this show off with the Wall of Hoop movies. Your favorite hoop movie of all time and why? Man, that's one of the toughest questions I got asked all year. And I'm going to go with He Got Game. Um, and I just think it's the, uh, the storyline of what I think we've all went through or wanted to go through trying to, you know, get recruited and you know, the, the turmoil that they had, you know, just, you know, with within that movie kind of, you know, kind of showcases exactly kind of what happens for a lot of kids and um, getting recruited and uh, the family aspect of it. And uh, I just, in reality, actually could act. Like, he kind of played that part real well, you know yeah. what I mean? And, I mean, he was a hooper. He, yeah. he was playing himself, right? And then Denzel did, you know, Denzel do his thing. Right. You can't, you can't go against Grant against him. Man. Yeah. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, are you were you the type of player to go in the park with your your high school team and have the newspaper that you state champs after you win? Is that that's how you play the game? No, nah, we ain't go we ain't go to the park like that. But I used to love hooping in the park though, man. That's that's where I got my game from. Really, is mm -hmm. just playing outside, man. I used to hours and my mom couldn't find me. I right. was somewhere in the streets on my bike uh, on a basketball court. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, so that that leads into man. What when did you fall in love with basketball? Man, I fell in love with the game at like 11 years old. Uh, I can remember um, just, you know, it was one of the sports, number one. I, I'm from Houston, so, you know, football is key. Mm -hmm. And, man, it's too hot out there for me, brother. <laughs> and, uh, man, ant piles and you know, big bugs. I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going uh, to make it out here. And I actually was pretty good at it. But I fell in love at 11, man, just the camaraderie of, of the sport. You know, it's five guys against five. And you know it's a it's a fast paced live action game, and you know the, the you know sports you know the tie can change, but there's something about when basketball and the momentum shifts and it changes the energy that uh, goes into that man. It just I just fell in love with you know everything about it, you know. So been thankful to keep doing it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. What um, now growing up, 11 years old, playing yeah. in rec leagues. Did you start AAU ball? What was your yeah. journey um, through the youth youth side of basketball? Yeah, so I played in um, I played in like a community league, like an eleven, and I was just dominating. I was destroying guys, and then uh, I, I got to AU um, like right around like twelve, thirteen, and I got destroyed. Hmm. And I was like, okay, this is a different game. Like, there's some cats out there that can really play. And um, man, that right there motivated me through anything. I can remember how it happened and when it happened. Man, this small gym in Houston called uh, Paul Revere. And man, these cats was big, man. They were faster than me. They were dunking. They were, and I'm like, yo, I gotta catch up. Like I thought I was the baddest thing in Houston, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't. And so uh, that kind of struck a fire in me, and uh, ignited kind of my work ethic, and ignited, uh, you know, probably who I am today. Nice. Uh, and yeah. then, who do you credit for your development? Was it you going to the park and just hooping, yeah. or did you have someone to kind of show you the game? So man, I had a cousin. Man, uh, we were close. Like I mean, we talked every day. Um, man like a big bro to me man and he he uh you know he helped me elevate my game um man we used to he it, said it that's the name <laughs> of the show thank you but go ahead <laughs> man he did though it was uh it was real and like we used to wake up in the mornings and you know get up and and and, and do our mile and you know get our our, our shots up and ball handling man. and um go back you know to the crib and you know after practice we would go you know run streets and you know, hoop and, and find courts to go hoop against, and you know we try to stay on, you know, and be on the same team. But you know, he's probably the one that um, you know really taught me the game. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yes, I I always find with people who kind of get somewhere in this game, it's always a, a family member, right? Yeah. Somebody close at first that kind of shows you shows you the way. And that was yeah. the same thing for me. Somebody I called my cousin, but it was my cross the street neighbor who I grew up with. For sure, and for sure. He. He he started just showing me crossovers, had me shooting over a broom, yeah, and all that yeah. little stuff. That, all that crazy stuff we used to do, man. We used to do <laughs> right. some crazy stuff back we, then. Man, what? We was yeah. trying to figure it out. Little cones and what? What? Put put the put the tape on the floor, footwork drills, jump yeah. rope. We yeah, 
Who who did ankle weights? Why is my, my man? My <laughs> knees are so jacked up from them ankle weights. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we I walked around school in them things. Ankle weights. I had bounced though, but uh, I know I never got great enough. Yeah, <laughs> did work out for me. And so um, from so middle school working in the high school. So the high, the high school scene, basketball scene in Houston is it's pretty pretty crazy. You guys have yeah, a lot of talent live. that come from out of there. Yeah, so. it's live, man. What um, was uh, what school did you go to, and what was that like? Yeah, so I went to Klein Forest, and man, we had so much talent that came like through there, man. And our districts was stacked. I mean, for example, like Jimmy Butler was in our district. And, oh wow! Uh, when I was a junior, by the way, Jimmy, I got all your MVPs, and you know that. Um, <laughs> but me and Jimmy used to battle. Uh, the whole league was stacked, man. Um, in terms of our district, we had uh, I, forget, I, I can't think of the number of pros, but it was double digit like pros. Like during the, your four years in high school. During my four years. Who um, else besides Jimmy that that you could probably? Uh, Trey Murray played on my team. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, um, probably my. I mean, I grew up with uh, T uh, since the sixth grade. We've okay. been on the same team. Middle school, we didn't lose a game in anything. Mm. Like football, basketball, football, basketball, track, all the big ones. We we didn't lose anything until we got to high school, and uh, he went to the league, played for the Knicks. Um, now he's working for the uh, 76ers, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So we uh, my my freshman year. Um, that's when I kind of got a lot of uh, of, of pub. Um, I actually committed my freshman year. Oh really? Yeah, to Utah. That's, so I was, I was top ranked. Um, was playing, you know, 17s. Um, and then uh, by my senior year, you know, we had five D1s on the team, went to state, and we lost. Um, so, yeah, man, man, high school was fun. Man. I had a blast. You know, man, so, well, so, okay, we got to go back to this. You committed your freshman year. What made you commit to Utah so early? Yeah, so um, when I was in the eighth grade, uh, I got a scholarship to Texas A&M for football. Mm. And... Like I, my, I didn't want to do it. My high, my middle school coach was like, "You're insane! <laughs> like, what are you doing?" <laughs> and um, I started getting like all these calls, man, of, of like late night calls, and I hit my mom up and stuff like that. And um, I was like, "Man, I don't want to go through this process. Like, I just want to commit and get it out of the way." <laughs> um, and uh, my coach came and watch. He actually came to watch another player, uh, Demetri Goodson, who uh, uh, played at Gonzaga and he played in the NFL. Um, good, good dude. Um, and then he, you know, somebody said, "Hey, there's a guard over there next door. It's pretty good too." And so he came and watched me. Um, and the dude offered me that day. Uh, oh. Watch one. Who was your coach? Uh, you coach talking? Boylan. Jim oh, okay. Boylan. Oh, Jim, Jim Boylan. Boylan. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, heard a lot of stuff about Jim, and he <laughs> he came in there and offered me, man, on on the on the spot. And I said, anybody watch me play one time, and you know, thinks highly of me like that. You know, why not? Wow, yeah. man, that's that's awesome to hear that you were somebody believed in you. You committed on the spot, and also that he was able to stay there for four years as a college coach. Now they with coaching carousel, right? Then, well, he did no, he, he didn't stay there for all four. Oh, yeah, it, it got kind of dude. My <laughs> my college career wasn't pretty, man. Okay, okay, oh, woof. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> okay, so there's some some caveat to maybe committing that early as well. Yeah. Maybe I, what I wanted to get to, it kind of took pressure off you as far as performance though, yeah, in high school, it did. right? Yeah, it did. The weight, the weight of me trying to figure out what school I wanted to go to. In my senior year, I almost decommitted mm -hmm. just because it was, I was getting so many calls. Like, man, like, you know, some of my dream schools were hitting me up. But I just didn't have it in me like, to decommit to somebody. Yeah. Um, but it did take a lot of weight off me because all, all I had to do was hoop yeah. and just try to win. You know what I'm saying? My legacy was... uh. To win a state, you know, uh, the, you know, chip, and you know, I didn't. Obviously, we didn't get there, but um, yeah, it was it was a lot of weight off me. Man, that's crazy. And then so, um, did you even have to play AAU while you were in high school? Then you just did the hoop. Nah, for sure. That's yeah. I, want, I want I want all the smoke. I wanted to mm. see who the best guys were. I wanted to play against the best guys. Um, yeah, I was ultra competitive, man. I had a list on my wall, like you know, I'm marking off guys. I got him, you know. I gave him thirty, so that was my that was my thing, man. I was just ultra like competitive, so. That that's yeah. dope. That's dope, man. Who'd you play for for AAU, and what was the scene like? Yeah, you know, then? Houston Select, Houston okay. Select. So uh, it was us in the hoops. I know you know Houston hoops. Yeah, I heard them. Is mm -hmm. you know um, Houston Select was an um, Adidas team. Houston hoops was a Nike team. Right. And so we used to just you know go back and forth, man. I had some great teammates, like I said, man. Like 
uh, Dexter Pittman, D. Reed, um, Trey Murray, uh, Demetri Goodson, Tremaine. You know, these guys all were big time athletes, man. So when we uh, when we got together, man, we were we were hell. Man. Yeah. What was it that you think was so different about your game that you had college offers as a freshman? What what did you bring that Boylan came in and was like, he got it? Yeah, man, I competed, man. And I played hard. I played hard, man. I, I tried to lock you up, and I could score the ball, you know, easy. But then I could also, uh, like, you know, like demand the game. Um, I think he saw that just, you know, I remember him saying, like, I, I never seen somebody dive on the floor and pick up. Like I want, I, I want to win that bad, you know what I'm saying, and um, and then you know pick up full when I want to pick up full, and you know and then, you know score, you know seven points in a row. Where's that tenacity come from? Do you think that dog, or you just yeah. you, the comp, the competitiveness? Is it siblings? What, yeah, it has, how you grew you know, up? My, what, what is that? Yeah, it's my family, man. My my father, man. He's a uh, he's one of them dudes who's always hard on me about winning and like and everything, mm -hmm. uh, and just not sports. He wasn't a big sports guy, but he was about winning. Um. And then, uh, man, just you know, my I was always a runt with you know like my uh, cousin stuff, so they were bigger than me, and they used to you know you know how it is, you know, mm -hmm. you the little guy, they are gonna knock you around and you know beat you up, stuff like that. But man, ultimately, man, it just came from you know really, um, man, just the I, I I hate the 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 thing about you know do you love to win or hate to lose thing. Oh uh, man, the, the, the bottom line is you wanna win, oh, yeah. like. That's it. I don't know about anything <laughs> else. Like just go, just go get it. So um, that's that's just kind of how I was raised and bred. Man, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's uh, I didn't know that part about uh, you know just being offered yeah. that early, accepting that early, yeah, and yeah. then so transitioning to college. So Boylan was there when you first entered college. Yeah. So uh, Boylan was there when I first entered college, my freshman year. Um, I got hurt uh, off season, and. Um, but I'm probably, I think they have a study on my ankle, man. They, they got the worst ankle sprain in the history of Utah sports. Like <laughs> I tore, I tore every ligament in my my ankle, so I couldn't walk for uh, like two months. I, I couldn't put any weight on or anything like that. I had a boot, I walk around with, a, you know, back then we didn't have the little wheel thing. We had the crutches, so man, mm -hmm. I was, well, that's how I got swole. I got swole quick. <laughs> with the crutches, man. What? Let's walk around that campus where I was. That was hell. But. Um, Jim Boy was there my freshman year, got hurt, red shirted. Um, then came back uh, that red shirt freshman year, um, played, and then you know Jim got let go. Um, but then my sophomore year, I believe, going into my junior, and Larry Kostoviak came, and that's when we kind of switched to the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the first year we switched to the Pac-12, and man, we got our head beat in. Boy, it was bad. We were yeah. getting killed. The transition. Uh, was, uh, oh, but always. I mean, I love the Pac-12 though. So I played in three different conferences, and Pac-12 is my favorite um, mm. out of the conferences. And um, man, I, had, I I love the Pac-12. I wish I wish I would have stayed in the Pac-12. Um, but then after that, uh, you know, Larry wanted to go a different way. Um, and you know, still love Coach Man and Dev. He's a good dude too as well. And went to Drake University, and then played at Drake for a year, and then you know. Two knee surgeries at Drake kind of, you know, that's when my, you know, career started kind of trickling down. Man, were those, so we always talk about this. I deal with it with some of my kids who are in college now, man. Yeah. Training staffs and athletic, you know, training and rehab in college. Yeah. Man, what's, yeah. what's that like? Is it different at every school? Yeah. And yeah. do you believe that they can do better? For sure. You know? Yeah. I don't know how it is now. You know, obviously I've you know, been out for a minute of college, but, you know, back then, man, you know, we, we were a little bit more old school back then, you know, put some ice hat on it and let's go. Um, right now we have all this like, you know, Timberwolves right now and this technology is insane, yeah. you know, about how they can fix stuff and, um, you know, what it looks like. But, you know, I credit, I, uh, you know, I beat up my body a little bit when I was younger, you know, just playing on the concrete, you know, that that's mm -hmm. different, right? So it just kind of like caught up with me. Um, but, yes, I do think, you know, I mean, obviously, man, we're having some unfortunate deaths, you know, within, within the you know, basketball right now with these mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. Um, and so we have to step up our game on that side of regardless if it's college or high school level or, and pros. Yeah. Like we have to figure that out. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think because of the, because of all the knowledge that we have and the access that these kids have, they're starting mm -hmm. to do stuff that kids didn't normally do before. Right. And they're pushing their bodies to the limit. Right. And they may not be ready for it or 
um, we're not uh, doing the right assessment and test to make sure they are prepared for it or, or whatever right, it is. Sure. And the internet just is too much access. These kids can just buy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, no, that's a, that's a big subject that, that, uh, our coaching staff has been talking about as we deal with middle school athletes. Right. It's like, man, let's give them this information before they hit high school, right? Before it gets serious where they, you know, um, uh, whatever it is that's causing these things, but just giving the information how to take care of their bodies essentially yep. is, is extremely important. Did the injuries, did you ever think about stop playing while you had those injuries? No, uh, it was more so just, all right, well, how can I get healthy? And uh, no, what those injuries did was help me change my game. Mm. Like I was a different player from high school to, you know, to college, man. I had like three different players that I was. And so who, I think- Who were those three players? Yeah, so like high school, man, I was a, athletic ball handling point guard you know who can could shoot but wasn't like a great shooter but i can i can knock it down probably you know make like two you know, game um but you know like I, I was getting to the rack when i was finishing mm -hmm. um real real crafty with the ball um and and then you know once i had my ankle injury my explosive kind of went down a little bit and so i became more of a, a shot guy man just shooting the ball man i was Playing like Ray Allen, like come mm -hmm. off screens, like you know Reggie oh, okay. and stuff like that. So I had to yeah. change and adapt to that, um, you know. And then you know my knees went out. You know I had a little bit of both in me. You know I was more you know steady, um, you know you know with straps. So mm -hmm. so that the evolutions of my game kind of helps me now know and understand how to work guys out or look at somebody's game and say, okay, I, I know how to. I've done that before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's so, pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah they kind of transition through different phases as a player. Right. I'm just now slowing down. I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was oh, oh, you, you, you were slow like that. You were nice like that. Yeah, man, I was, I was a little like Russell Westbrook. That's my <laughs> style. Like, we just going to go yeah, yeah. and figure this out later. And now yeah. that, you know, the, the, the knees and all oh, that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff catching up. Slow it down. Little Andre Miller in my game. Yeah, now. Yeah. Mark Jackson back in Europe from Love that. Love that. They, <laughs> were, they were nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, so your experience, you said, uh, through college, Pac-12 was your favorite league. Yeah. Why? Was it the competitiveness of the mm -hmm. league? Um, yeah, there were some good guys, boy. There was, was some guys there, man, um, that we played against that were, uh, you know, top level. But the spacing of the league, though, it was more uh, a free-flowing league. You know, it didn't have the, the crazy help, like the Mountain West and the Missouri Valley. Like, they were like... I didn't know if there was zoning men half of the time. Uh -huh. The Pac-12 was more wide open, you know, free flowing, faster pace, yep. um, and it and it simulated more of the NBA style. Uh, so you know, I, I had a really uh, like my year was good. Unfortunately, we were bad, but you know, I, I loved it. How did that? How did that play against your attitude of always winning, oh, playing man, for losing teams? What, what was uh, that mental space like? Man, probably one of the, the hardest times I've had basketball wise. Man, just not being able to you know to win at that level. Because I I won all my life, you know. So, you know, seeing that was like, man, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I was lost. I never had lost like that. Um, so it was very hard, man. What do you tell? What would you tell a kid? What would you tell yourself? Somebody who's going through that, who has that winning spirit, who is talented, who mm -hmm. has it, but is in a losing situation because of the organization the they're in. Yeah. 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 But you gotta you gotta find something that you can learn from it within that situation and. Um, you know, just because you're not winning doesn't mean you can't learn. Mm. And I think, you know, that's kind of where we, we, where we have to grow, you know, even within the sport of, of a basketball. Yeah, losses, it, it sucks, but you have to learn why you're losing. And then, you know, can you get better from, you know, that lesson that, mm. that, uh, um, that you know, gave you that outcome? So um, I would definitely give myself that advice, man. I try to, you know, do that now as a coach. Absolutely. Yeah. So, post college, play pro at all? Yeah. So, went to uh, J Japan for like a month, man, and knees gave out and had to come back. And um, went to uh, the G League after I got healthy again, and um, just couldn't quite ever get back to, to you know to myself. Um, so, I had a really short uh, career, unfortunately. Uh -huh. And then um, you know went to some training camps and stuff like that, but never could uh, you know get, get healthy. Um, and then after that, man, it was, it was kind of wrapped for me. You know, I had to figure out life. Awesome. So what was figuring life out? Did you have, we, all, we know you're a coach now. Was there yeah. any other careers that you considered in between and tried? Yeah, or? I was um, I was frustrated with the game, man. I yeah. was mad at the game. 
Mm. You know, I was like, man, I put all this work into it, and this is the outcome of it. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't touch a ball, and uh, I took took like a, a year hiatus, man. And mm. um, I went and did a internship for the mayor of mm. Houston. Um, I got my master's in um, uh, public administrations, and so did that for about six months. And man, I dreaded it every day. I was sitting <laughs> I was there, about to say, like, man, what was that like? talking to constituents. You know, Miss Jenkins and them, they, they got <laughs> potholes. And she mad at the pothole. And Miss Jenkins, we gonna come fix it. Don't worry about it. Well, you said that last week. I know. Well, we got so I just couldn't do it no more, man. I was like, you know what? This ain't gonna work for me. And, uh, I, and while I was driving again, losing, I was, gave myself the lesson that you know what? Hey, I got the best internet in the world. Mm. Because the internet in Houston is the, at the city is the fastest internet. So let me start researching how to get the hell out of this. <laughs> and so that's what I did. Thank you, Google. Yeah, okay. Boy, it was fast. So I started clicking that Google button. I'm, I'm reaching out to coaches, man. And uh -huh. um, I reached out to my uh, college coach, um, Jim, Jim Boylan. And I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into coaching. And uh, you know, he said, email this guy. And you know, never heard back from him. And, and it's the, it's, that story's crazy, too. So. Um, my friend uh, Trey Murray went to the NBA, like I said, and started working out. Started working him out, and uh, we started. You know, I started getting this love of working people out. Got had like three clients in Houston, and then um, man, the rest is history. I got a call from one of my mentors up here. He's like, "Yo, you got to come up here, man. I need I need help." Um, and then the rest is history from there. Um, the guy that I emailed, I found him at the summer league. It took me the last day to find them, the very last day. Mm. And you know, I asked, I said, hey man, you know, I, I emailed you and um, you know, I'm looking, looking for any opportunity to get in. Um, you know, is there any hiring positions? And he said, yeah, I know who you are. And he just pointed to a guy and said, go talk to that guy. And uh, it was my first uh, G League head coach that I worked for. And that was my first internship getting in. What team was that for? RGV. RGV, yeah, okay, yeah. Program, I was like, you were at home too, well, kind yeah, of, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, it's five hours, you know, Texas big. Wait, what? Yeah, five hours. I did not know it was that far away because it's at the south end of Texas yeah, as well. It's, it's right on the border of Mexico, man. I used to go back and forth. So Houston time. is five hours from the border of Mexico? Yeah, hey, man, it takes 12 hours to get out of Texas, man. It's, I Texas know it takes huge. a day to drive through it on a, a road trip for yeah. sure. I didn't. I thought Houston and the border of Mexico were nah, way no, closer than that. five hours, man. Y'all just need to be your own country at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we, damn near, we damn near are already. So what was that grind like? Because you said you emailed a guy that yeah. coach told you to, yeah. and then you had to find him on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. People don't understand. Like you think somebody like you who played at, right. at played college had a great, uh, you know, young a grassroots career, mm -hmm. played in college, played overseas for a little bit, had tryouts, and then you still had to put the grind grind hat on. Yeah, man. What I mean, it's it's a hard business to get into because everybody wants to get in, yeah. uh, and so the window is small. And, and the jobs, I mean, there's less coaches than there are NBA players. I mean, think about that. And how hard is it? Get, how hard is it to get in the NBA? And um, so yeah, I emailed. You know, I, I emailed them and kept emailing them and um, got no response back. But I knew I had to go to the source. Yeah. I had to go to the source. And I tell you know people all the time like, is that something that you want to do? Is you can't you know sit there and just keep writing letters. You got to go mm -hmm. to the spot that you're writing to. Yes. And um, that's what I did, and you know, I got a chance, got the opportunity, and I, and I took it. Yeah. So how important is it for promising, um, you know, people promising and getting the coaching or being with the NBA team, summer league? Mm -hmm. How big of an impact can going there and networking have on a career? Do you think? Yeah, it's huge because all the NBA personnel are there, and it's almost like a meet and greet for us again, a gathering again, you know time for us to network again along with you know um, these kids who are trying to make the NBA and so you see personnel uh, from everywhere from GMs to scouts uh, to um, the coaches mm -hmm. um, and so you get an opportunity to be around that and be around them in a, in a you know face-to-face -face moment flesh-to-flesh -flesh moment and so you know if you're you know trying to get in and, and, and targeting somebody man that's the best place to do it because they're probably going to be there yeah yeah Absolutely. And so you said you were training at this time. So you had three uh, professional players that you were yeah. training. And so uh, when did you know that you had a knack for training? Um, you know, it's crazy. I think my whole career, that's what God wanted me to be. 
Mm. Is a trainer. Yeah. Well, uh, I think so. Not coach. At this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he went. <laughs> I, I did it, man. I did it my whole life, man. I, my cone drills and you know my like my my guys would all my guys that I hoop with in, in high school would tell you like I was the one leading all our drills and our workouts. Yeah. Like I was the one that was you know scheduling. Hey, look, we're gonna run these these ladders. You know, we're gonna do this in the morning. Um, and I and it was just a natural for me to get better. Yeah. And so um, I always just had a of of spirit of being that person. And then once. You know, I started doing it for a living. It like clicked. I'm like, this is, this is what I'm doing for a living. Like, you know, right. it's crazy. I, like, I do this in my sleep. Yeah. And so uh, it just kind of all messed together. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's important, like you said, like the love that you have for it. Right. And you did it, and it was like, oh, if you never work a day in your life, right? That. Oh, all right. What is it? What is it? You never. Yeah. Now you confuse. If you love what you do, yeah, you never work you a day in your life. Me. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have Karina here. She is the brains yeah. of this operation. There we go. I just sit here. Look, um, don't, don't call Siri. You hit <laughs> Karina. I got you. Uh, and so that's important because we just came back from from the clinic. Um, yeah. The, the uh, Phil Candy Clinic put on a coach's clinic certification. Mm. And we were just discussing. It was awesome having so many coaches there. Yeah. But also the um i just want to say the wide range of knowledge yeah that the coaches have yeah. you know the questions that were being asked or um you know just the you can see where there's a space between wanting to do what you do right and actually having the love for the game to do it yeah yeah it's like they were asking questions of how you know, how do you do that all day? How do you stay in shape? <laughs> and if right. it was responsive, like, you got to love this. You got to love it. You got to love it. Dude, you, I mean, when I say you got to love it, you literally have to be, you know, invested in it. Yes. Like, it is not, it's not a profession where it's like you can turn it on, turn it off. It's always on. And it's yeah. on, it's on, you know, uh, you know, 365 days. And so you got to be, you know, willing to put your body on the line, your time on the line, mm -hmm. yourself on the line. Yes. Um, every day, and you know, if, if if you don't have, if you can't stomach it, this ain't this ain't the business for you. Right. Yeah. It's a literally a job that is focused on making someone else better. Every day. And and in that in turn, you get better from it. Every day. Uh, I think you said something that was super important. I stopped lifting weights when I do the pre-draft process. I don't lift. Right. Because I'm moving humans. Yes. And so you don't really got to lift. Hey, I don't do have to go lift weights. I'm hitting bodies. You yes. got a guy. 230 pounds coming at you, and he's super fast. That's a little bit worse than lifting weights, brother. <laughs> right. I'm gonna tell you right now, you get a hit from Anthony Edwards. Man, that's a, that's a little different than lifting weights. So, <laughs> Trey Lyles. <laughs> yeah. Hit me one time, and I was yeah. like, nah. First of all, hold on, Trey. You Trey, you ain't like that. Oh. Listen, <laughs> no, Trey's my boy. I, I love know, Trey. Yo, I love Trey. This man is a brick wall, yeah, man. Yeah. He bumped me one time in the post. I was like, "Yeah, oh, why? Why are my arms still oh, hurt? Yeah, like man. it was, it was crazy." And that's why I know I was like, "Okay, this is this is different." Now I got to protect yeah. myself first yeah, off, to. but also got to be prepared right. for. You're almost have to be like NBA players are in elite shape, for sure. like probably for most sure. in shape people. You know, mm -hmm. um, of uh, not gonna say of any sports, just professional athletes, right? Yeah. As a trainer, you have to be in almost better shape than them because right. you're seeing five, six of them in a day sometimes. Yeah, and not only that is, you know, if you're a good trainer, you know, and you have the shadow box yes. on your feet, and you know, make this stuff you know, realistic for these guys. Um, you know, again, you have to put your body on the line physically. You know, when you do that stuff, and you know, as you get more experience on it, you kind of know how to pace yourself yep. within, you know, what drills and. Um, and within your teaching, and so uh, you know, like you said, you grow like anything else. You know, you know, kind of becomes easier. Yeah. So first entering the G League um, yeah. with a uh, RGB, what what did you learn? What was uh, what was yeah. different for you? How was it coming into this new career? Yeah, I mean, the G League. I tell everybody, man, it is one of the best uh, educational coaching leagues in the world because you have to go through everything. They give you no resources. So, you know, you're sitting here, you're, you, you're cutting up the film, you're doing laundry, you're writing reports, you're uh, doing offense, maybe sometimes defense too. Um, you know, you're doing the PD stuff. 
you're doing the, uh, the player development play. for y'all that don't know basketball. Yeah, talk. Sorry. yeah. I'm sorry, PD. Yep. Player development. Um, you're doing um, uh, different scouts, so you get to have this wide range of perspective of the of the NBA and how it works um, in a very uh, place where you don't have you have very limited resources. Yeah. So you have to figure out how to do it. Mm. Um, so it, it, it taught me everything. It gave me my foundation in coaching. So Awesome. So with that, um, what players were you working with then? And, like, are they still in the league? What was that, yeah. you know, like from a, a player development right. and coaching perspective? So we had a kid. Uh, it was funny is, so I played against a guy who actually I coached. I coached him. <laughs> Josh Smith. Y'all know Josh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big Josh. So Big Josh was there. Um UCLA. Yes. Yeah. yeah big Josh. So yeah. I played against him and coached him, which is which is wild to say. Um and then uh Will Cummings. Will mm -hmm. Cummings uh is a really good pro now overseas, man. It has a lot of success over there. I think he was just recently in China. Um Chris Walker, who is probably the has the longest tenure in G League history of being a guy of games played. Um then we had uh we had guys used to come down from the Rockets like Montres Harrell. Mm. And Hardenstein, those guys, uh, they'll yeah. come down uh, and get their work in. So um, it was it was good. Uh, actually, KJ, I think KJ McDaniel was there. I think KJ was there too mm -hmm. as well. But it was we had we were very very talented. Uh, Neil yeah. Johnson, man, we had guys that could really play. Man, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. And um, what was the transition? So you're a G League. Yep. What was the next coaching spot? So yeah, G League, and then you know I uh, I didn't even know they were gonna bring me back or not. I came back to Cali. And once I came back to Cali, I started, you know, uh, working with uh, Chris Johnson. and That's when we met? Yep. Okay. That's when Got we it. met. I was working with Chris Johnson and, um, you know, met Phil Handy. And, you know, they kind of took me under their wings and, you know, have, have helped me, um, you know, put together a, a, a blueprint of teaching, helped me master that. Um, and then, you know, with that, I was, you know, just working in the summer, uh, you know, with, uh, with teams, with players. And, you know, we were working out um, the China team. I don't know if you were there or not. The, the China team we were working out um, at that time. What year was this? It might be I, this might be a year before we met. Actually, okay. we met the year the when the, I came back from the China. D Wade invite. Yeah, you were okay. you were a coach in China. It was yeah. the year before you won the championship. Okay, gotcha. and then you were out there. Okay, and yeah. Came back. So, so this before, is the year before that. Okay. Yeah, and so we had a Chinese team. They we used to go and work out and you know, put them through a whole summer practice and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And um, they offered me a job to coach, and they were like, "Hey, like you know, would you want to be an assistant?" You know, we'll give you a trial for a month. So I went to China over there for a month and ended up, you know, staying for three years. Wow. So, yeah. What's the difference? What was it like coaching? I, I know the, probably the money was better, right? Um, yeah, definitely <laughs> in the G League, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you get play scrap. The G League is a real grind. Like, it People is don't a sacrifice. Get it. The G League is a grind, brother. You it are, is. it is huge. All yeah. all, all y'all coaches in the G League, y'all keep grinding out there, man. Yes. It's going to pay off. Yep. Good. And then, so going over to China, um, yeah. man, what made you stay out there for three years? What, what was it? Um, you know, it, it's not really what made me stay out there in China. It was, it, it just, it was part of my journey. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, from year to year, I didn't know I was going to come back. I, uh, my first year, um, man, we had some good players at Carlos Boozer uh, and uh, Sloan, D. Sloan, mm -hmm. and um, went to the championship, lost in the championship. That coach got fired after that. Then they brought in a, a European coach, so I'm thinking, hey, I'm going too. Um, still got a call. They said come back. Um, yeah, out there in China, the coach doesn't necessarily control the team and the coaches. No, it, it is the like straight the ownership. Owner. Yeah, the owner, yes. the owner, he is the GM. He is everything. Yes, and they will cut your head off. They will. Yep. And yep. so uh, I'm thinking my head's gonna get cut off, <laughs> and it did. It. And so they brought me back, European coach. Uh, we didn't have a really good year that year. I kind of was, you know, scrambling to, you know, figure out our, you know, who we were as a team. And then the next year, um, my first coach that got fired came back, got rehired. <laughs> for so, the same team? Yeah, for the same team. It's China. <laughs> it's China. They're a little different over there. <laughs> yeah. So, coached with him, and then we won a championship over there. Nice. And uh, What Americans did you, or did you have Americans oh, on man, the team? Oh, man, it was stacked. It oh, was yeah. stacked. We had, um, so it was crazy. This is kind of how... You know, I, I, I want to say, I, I want to take this light, but I think I changed the game over there in China. Okay. Let's I really do. It. Let's talk I really about do it. Think I really do think I changed the game over there in China. So, in China basketball, if you don't understand or know it in the CBA, it is like playing in the early 90s and 80s. 
late eighties. Very physical. Physical, they hit you. Like they still run flex, dude. Yeah. Like they run flex. I'm like, who runs this? <laughs> so, you know, we had a a big Chinese man and you know, I don't know if you know the rules, but you only have two Americans. Right. And they can only play in certain quarters. Um and so But they can only play in certain quarters? Yeah, so uh they can only so one American could so you, how does the rule go? Um in two quarters they can play together. Mm. But they cannot play together in the fourth quarter. So you can only have your best American on the floor in the fourth quarter, essentially, or one, one of them. I should yeah, say one of them. Wow. And so to coach it is weird, right? So do you want to put the two in two quarters? Do you want to do the first quarter? Or do you want to do the second and third? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Or do you want to alternate it? Do you want to do the first quarter then you do the third? Right. And so you know we kind of had to figure out that system. Mm -hmm. but we had a big Chinese guy, uh, Yi Jin Yin, who. Since he's he's the NBA player, I don't, and I, it's crazy how he didn't just stick because he has all the, the tangibles to be that. And usually, um, you get uh, a big American and a small, or you know, uh, it's a guard, you know, and that's how they kind of play it, so they can kind of even it out. Well, I'm like, hey, like we don't need a big American, like we have we got the, we got a big already. Let's get two guards and let's play fast as hell. Let's 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 go, you mm. know. And uh, my coach was like, no, nah, you know, we'll get beat up in the post. You know, you can't. And so our big American got hurt, Randolph Morris, that year. He broke his thumb in a preseason game. And we had Malcolm Delaney. Uh, and so we're looking around, we're looking at wings. And it was out of uh, Sonny Weems and I believe Scotty Hopson at the time. And so we went with Sonny. And do we set records? Because we were playing so fast. We had two wings. They couldn't keep up with us. Because who's guarding the other American? Another Chinese player. Mm -hmm. And he can't guard him. Right, too athletic. Right, too athletic, too fast, too good. And so what we started doing was, you know, we were we, we set we set a record of, of wins in a row at 26, I believe. Um, we, we, had the, we were leading the league in um, points per game in the history of the, the game. Um, I think we were averaging like, I think it was like one... 28, it was something crazy. Like oh, we were, yeah, we were, we were crushing buckets. guys. And so it was crazy. Even though we were crushing guys, we kind of hit like a little dip to where we weren't beating teams in. And the China pressure to win each game is mass. Like, because mm. the owners, like, they put a lot, lot of money into it, game mm. to game. And so. What do you mean? Uh, like betting? I think so. I can't oh, okay. just. Got you. Put okay. it out there. No, no. Home. You're saying that there's just a lot invested, so every win yeah, matters to them like, because of the we, investment that yeah, they have into the team. Right. right. On top of that, on top of that, it's like like they're like 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 they hold their balls on that. Like they're like, yo, like I beat your team, ha ha. You suck. Like they, the oh, owners sorry. hate each other. It's it's <laughs> it's it's, it's weird thing. And so like they lose. It's like yo, it's not it's the end of the world. One game, it's the end of the world. Man. And so we started kind of skidding a little bit, and I mean, I think we lost three games that season. Um, but, so the owner's like, hey, we're gonna bring in another uh, American. And I'm like, why? We kill him. So we end up cutting Malcolm, which Malcolm is one of the best pros that um, I've ever coached. Man, this dude can play. Uh -huh. I was watching another podcast and somebody, I wanna say, uh, Iman Shumpert said it, and that dude's a problem. So uh -huh. Malcolm, you out there, boy, we, we know your game, boy, you, you cold. Um, and so they cut Malcolm and bring in Marshawn Brooks, who I uh, love. Boy, Chinese, boy, the China Kobe, you hear me? Yeah, boy, Kobe. And, and Sonny was our glue, man. Sonny's the ultimate pro. He's a glue, mm -hmm. man, he could defend, he guard, he's fast, athletic. And so you had these two guys come in and they're saying, hey, we still gotta get better. And I'm like, what are these guys doing? So they bring in Michael Beasley. For Sonny? For Sonny. So check this out. So we wow. had Michael Beasley just sitting on ice. And Mike, so they switched him out, kept Sonny there, played Mike. Mike, his first game, it was crazy how they did this. Mike's first game, he he, he hits, I think, it was, he had a triple-double. 35, 15, <laughs> and like... Seventeen. And I he, tell people all the time because when you work when you work with Mike, I see you work with Mike in the gym. I said uh, by far the most offensively talented player that I, I've seen one on one. Listen, like it's crazy. I've been, man. I've been in the gym with the most talented players in the world. I'm not gonna list them off. 
If, mm -hmm. if, if you uh, if it's your favorite player, I probably work with him. Mm -hmm. Nothing like Mike. Nothing. Nothing like Mike. Left hand, right hand, um, shoot it, handle it. One's problem. problem. Bigger than you think. Hands is massive. Yeah. Touch at the rim. I mean, the dude is was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and he played. So he played one game, killed it, got sick the next game. We brought Sonny back. Okay. And I think when we brought Sonny back, we we I think we broke a record again. We had we had like 160 some points. And so the staff's like, hey, listen, let's ride with this team to win it all. And if it gets shaky, we got Mike on ice. And so Mike just stayed there, played one game, and we won the championship. Mike, yeah, Mike was the highest paid player in the world at the time. Cause he played one game, man. I think like one point five or something. Like that. <laughs> it's crazy. Played it's one crazy. game for one point five man, million. What? Yeah, and it didn't did wow. play. He and he was fine because he was getting paid. He just kept him on ice, man. He was just chilling up there. Now he wanted he wanted to play. Right, 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 right. He, he was a hooper. frustrated right, he's that a hooper, he didn't play, man. Mm -hmm. That dude let him play. He's he's still hooping now, killing. Yeah, and um. He's still in China? No, he's uh no, he's just man, I think he's in Miami, you know, still playing, man, just out there hooping, staying in shape. Yeah. Um and I hope he gets another opportunity because dude can really hoop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, that that year was crazy. It taught me so much too, just on how to adjust. You know, the good the crazy thing about China and what it taught me was because you you, you work with an interpreter. Mm -hmm. And so you're you're talking to the interpreter, tell the interpreter to tell him what to do. And he looking at the table, you saying he's not doing it. So you are you messing up, or is he just not smart? Cause I don't know what's going on here. Do you understand the words that are coming out my mouth? For real, literally. <laughs> and you think, man, all the, it's, it's funny you say that quote because the interpreter's name was you. <laughs> so when I asked him, it's just like, oh, just like the movie. Hour, yeah. I said, man, what's your name? You. I said, man, my name is Chris. What's yours? You. I said, hey, man, you gonna stop playing with me, man? It was real. It was real smoke. Real, real talk. That was, I was about. To, I, like, me and him was about to get into it. His name is you, though. <laughs> yes, we got you. So, uh, but you know, I had to. I had to read body language, man. I had to read body language of the players. I had to read. Mm -hmm. I had to read the energy and the emotions. Wow. I had to. I, I couldn't communicate with them verbally. I have mm -hmm. to look it up and translate Google and all that. And you hear, oh, okay, yeah, I could. But, dang, I had to read the room yeah. and. Um, that gave me so much, man, there's no better education than just going and, and doing something like that, man. Yeah. So it helped me out a lot. No, that's yeah. awesome. I worked with two Chinese teams. Yeah. That came, they came over here. I wasn't over there. And that, that language barrier, just as far as how to tell them basketball stuff in Mandarin right. is crazy because the way they translate words that we say right. are just so different. And exactly. the one thing I knew, I was like, man, they just going to work hard. Chayo. Yeah, means light a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jayo, Jayo. Yeah, yeah that, Jayo. That's, <laughs> I remember that. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, man, that's dope, man, because you got a, a a different perspective than a lot of coaches have, just with yeah. the communication and being able to also be a part of a kind of a GM in a way, right? Bring yeah. these teams together right. and exactly. uh, understanding rotations, which yeah. I know Phil Jackson was huge on. If you read his books, like, hey, how we rotate players and which players are going against the second unit, exactly. and understanding that stuff. Um, you know, kind of earlier in your coaching career. This sure. is your second, third, fourth year of coaching. Yeah. Um, and, and you won the championship, too. So you yeah. get back to the winning part of your life. What, what would that feel like after uh, yeah, college? I, I got to see in color again. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing black and white for a while. Baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was awesome. good, man. That was, man, that was, that was a great time, man, in my life, of winning, winning that championship with those, awesome. with those guys, too. Nice. Um, what team was that, by the way? Uh, don't go on. Don't go on Tigers. Don't yeah. go on Tigers, okay. Awesome, and now, um, what happened after that third year? You win that championship, come yeah. back to the U.S. for yeah. the summer? Yeah, come, come back to the U.S. for the summer again. And, you know, that's what it seems like, man. Once you're done with the, your journey, you come back, you know, to your roots of teaching the game again. And um, um, they actually, uh, they didn't let me go, but they didn't want to, uh, to, 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 to pay up on the contract, re-upped on the money. And so I decided to, you know, go a different route. Um, After winning the championship, yeah, you know, I, it's That's supposed to be usually like, hey, look, like, yeah. want to pay you for winning champs, like, you know, and it just didn't work out, and you know, I, and what's interesting about that is, and this is just the, the business side of it, but they got, they found the formula, they got the winning formula, and now they didn't need me. Oh, uh, okay. I I know the formula now, right? So I know now we're gonna get two guards. So when I left, they got two guards. They win again. They won again. Mm. 
they got a three-peat off the formula. And that's wow. why I said I feel like I changed, changed the, game the game in China. <laughs> changed the game. Like wow. and, and so you saw other teams starting to well, we're going to get two guards too. But you don't have ye. You don't have that big in the middle. So you can't win like that. Mm -hmm. So, man, um, came back to the States and, you know, got back to my roots, you know, working out pros and, you know, just traveling doing that. Um, I got a call from uh, a, a GM that I worked with in RGB. Okay. Um, he actually was a GM at uh, Minnesota and hit me up and asked me to interview for the head coaching job for the uh, G League team. And I was runner up on that head coaching job. And so he asked me what I want to be the uh, associate head coach there. For, and I said, you know, why not? So it was my opportunity to get in the NBA mm -hmm. and see the system, you know, again, you know, from a different perspective and actually being ready for it. Nice. So that was in 2020? Uh, yeah, 2019, 2020. Yep. 2019, 2020. Yep. Your first year, um, so associate head coach of a G League yep. team. Um, you were more into player development. Now mm -hmm. you're over here in this coaching realm. Yep. When did you figure out, like, hey, I'm I'm not a player developer. I actually want to coach. Where, yeah, where and that's and, and the thing and the thing about it, if you're a really good player development coach, you should know how to coach. Yes, it's that simple because they they they're hand in hand. You know, you got to build this player to be a good player within a system. You know, and that's some of the and you know, I watch some of the summer guys work out and it's like, hey, like when the, when the hell is that guy gonna do that move? Yeah. Hey, yeah. he ain't doing step backs. He passing to that guy who make <laughs> two hundred fifty million. Mm -hmm. He got to be ready to to play smart off the ball and do stuff. So you so you know obviously you want to give the guy um, more tools and, and bag of the game, but it's a collective unit, man. This player development is coaching, yes. Um, vice versa, you putting it together, and so uh, you know I knew I wanted to coach as I was you know doing it. I'm like this is this coaching. Like, you yeah. got to be able to read, you got to be able to react, and put in different offenses and philosophies. You know, again, even when I was in China. You know, they didn't see some of the stuff like they didn't know what like splits were. You know, hit at the elbow, corner splits coming off DH. Like they didn't. They're like, what type of system is this? And so I've always loved the X and O's about it, um, and and getting our best players in a position to succeed. It's always been something that I've loved, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it just it fit perfectly for me. So your first league, our first league. Sorry, your first uh, year as the uh, associate head coach mm -hmm. for the Timberwolves G League team. Um, who were some of the players that you worked with, and how is that experience different from what you experienced in China? Oh man, it, this one, man, this one, uh, this one warms my heart because uh, you know there's still players I keep in touch with. Um, the Sam, Sam Newman Beck was a coach. Uh, he was a really good coach, man. Um, hey, shout out Sam. Uh, he was the head coach. Him and uh, and Dev, uh, Dev Smith, and so what we did together there was special. Um, even though we didn't win like we wanted to. We put, man, if I had to count, um, Nas Reed, mm. Jordan uh, McLaughlin, oh, yeah. Jalen Noel, uh, Keela Martin, Jared Van, uh, um, Vanderbilt, um, Amari Smith. Uh, these guys touched the NBA and yeah. still in it, right. playing well. You know, Nas yeah. has got this dope contract. You know, you know, J Max on the team, and he's you know one of the best second uh, string point guards in the league. You know, when he gets going. And uh you know, watch about to get paid yeah, next year. Yeah. 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 So it's uh it's 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 so humbling to see that and be a part of the journey and help, you know, grow that, you know, you know, for these guys, you know, trying to make the NBA and, and did. Yeah, yeah, so that's awesome. Um and then so that next year, um, did you stay with the G League? Did you move up? How was that transition? Yeah. And what's that process like for somebody who's in the G League to make it to the, you know, the NBA? Yeah, team? it was a it was a really weird year because that's when COVID hit and the world kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. So we never finished the G League season. I mm -hmm. never finished one as crazy as that sounds. Oh wow. So uh so yeah, like the trend so I, I, I was in it for a couple of months, man, and the world stopped. And I was on this like two way contract to where I was in the, I was a G League assistant getting paid as that, but I was farmed into the Minnesota team. So I would go up there and um be with the team and training camp and stuff like that. So um the the, the, the transition was I was always in the league kind of, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I uh, that very weird. I think it was weird for everybody at that time. <laughs> it was happening right. in the world. So Yeah. And then so Moving up, so after COVID, post COVID, yeah. what what happened then? Yeah, so um, post COVID happens, and 
So the bubble. I go, I go to the bubble. Well, so I don't go to the NBA bubble. And then, so I don't go to the NBA bubble. We start the next season. The next season I'm on this two-way joint to where we have a G League bubble. So right. I go to the G League bubble, but I'm still on the team. So after the G League bubble, I come back up. So at the time, uh, Ryan Saunders was a coach. And um, went through a little pitfall. And so I left the NBA team, went to the G League bubble. I, while I was in the G League bubble, you know, Ryan got let go. Um, oh, okay. And congratulations to Ryan, man. Got you a championship, brother, man. Hey, that's, that's so dope. Denver, congratulations to you guys. Um, so we go to the, so I come back and there's a whole new coach. I've, no, I've never met Finchie in my life. Don't know Finch from right. dog. I'm <laughs> like, oh man. Like, so I go in there. And I'm just kind of hanging around and doing film, doing my job. Like, um, <laughs> I don't have any players. I don't have anything. Like, uh, you know, I'm still working with Ant a little bit in terms of just like, you know, because he just always had, you know, a, a knack for me and him had a knack for working out, working with each other. And um, that was kind of it. Like, I just was kind of floating for a minute. I mean, once I, I think once Finchie saw my worth a little bit and kind of got to know me, like, you know, um, and, you know, the, the, the guy who hired me was still there at the time. Okay. Um, and so he's just like, yeah, just, you know, let him stay on or whatever. And, you know, it's really that relationship that kept me there. Um, and then the next year, man, I started getting the responsibilities of an assistant coach. Right. I, you know, they, they gave me four teams and then I had, I had six players my first year. Of, six players that you had to do. Yeah, player development. Player development. Yeah, with. which is very rare. Right. Uh, that sounds like a lot. So, yeah. What's a, so here, let's talk about what's a typical day in the life of uh, an assistant coach with, that does player development? What yeah, so like? um, for an assistant coach and a player development coach, and um, sometimes they, they love you as both, which, which I am, um, you know, I have, right now I have six teams that I'm responsible for with scouts. Um, so I do their defense, um, scout report, present it to the team, and then once I present it to the team, um, you know, we, we go out there and play, obviously, and then also normal coaches have around, like, two players, mm. you know, maybe, maybe three. You know, I get pushed with a lot of players, um, you know, just my impact of doing what I do. And, um, you know, you watch your film with your players, you work your guys out, um, you kind of transition in, you know, them to do exactly what we're doing within the game plan or schemes or whatever, talk to them about that. Um, and then kind of just kind of mesh that all together. And then I'm also responsible for um, the, the, the special teams, like zone, mm -hmm. presses, Stuff like that, so you have to kind of study those, and you know, you know, utilize, you know, uh, that aspect of the game on both sides of the ball. Um, but you know, a day in the life of, of a coach, man, it's nonstop. You don't get a lot of sleep. You travel like crazy. Um, you're always on the go. Um, basketball is probably on your brain about, I would say, 85 percent of your time mm. you know, during the day. Um, and, um, you know, it varies in terms of your day-to-day -day schedule due to the fact that a game day looks different than a practice day. Practice day looks different than off-season. So there's yeah. so many variations. Yeah. yeah. No, I think uh, we kind of discussed this earlier is, um, you know, maintaining relationships with yeah. having that position as an assistant coach and having, finding somebody who's understanding yeah. as a spouse yeah. um, or girlfriend or whatever it yeah. is, you know, to... Um, to match that like what what yeah. how does that impact you know your personal life your your first love is this like for sure <laughs> and so There's and then but yeah. also yeah. you know uh wanting to build a family and those right. types of things what you know what's what are your thoughts on that yeah. and and how do you approach that well if you try and give it me you're gonna have to marry the game too mm -hmm. it's that simple because i ain't i'm not going nowhere from that as mm -hmm. she she locked in for life i don't know if you saw pb's um pat bev his uh you know, he says something, I don't know if it was in a, his podcast or whatever, man, I see the clip. But, you know, he says something along the lines of, you know, the, the basketball is, is always going to be there for me. Mm -hmm. he, and, and, and he's like, yo, you, you know, you, you got a death in the family. You know, you, you got a ball, go grab your ball. You know, you, you got a heartache, go grab your ball. Your, girl, your girlfriend broke up with you, go grab your ball. Mm -hmm. You know, you're feeling lonely, go get your ball, you know. Life happens. Go get your ball. Your ball is always there. Like having that basketball, man, is something special to me. I think real hoopers it is. Yeah. You know, because you can always have that outlet with that basketball, man, and the love of the game, and it and it's getting it gave me everything. 
So you can't take that. And when you're a spouse or somebody um, that's coming into my life, you have to accept that. Yeah. And then unfortunately, you know, my time is limited. You know, I have to, you know, you know do my job and my job requires you know, me traveling. My job requires me you know, doing film studies. My, my job requires me having emotions after wins or losses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, that person has to be really special and, and, and to understand that. And, uh, man, it's, it's, it is tough, but, you know, I've seen it, you know, happen and be successful. But, you know, like I said, I think it's like 50% of the coaches I've met, man, they're single. And, wow. if, and if not, um, you know, they're with their family and they figured out a system that yeah. works, you know, for the coach and the, and the wife. No, I think it's important you talk about that system that comes down to communication. Man, what? Yeah. Expectations yeah. or no expectations being set more so. So, um, no, nah, man, I... I you know, I always just thought about that. Yeah. Like, that's why I never wanted to be a college assistant coach. Yeah, it's real. It's the same grind. And I'm like, man, I can't do that. Like, because yeah. for me, and so I'm saying this for people who want to do what you do, right. but have, you know, a different situation where yeah. the family is there and they want to spend more time with the family or some uh, a spouse or somebody who doesn't understand right. the type of work that you do or that right. they want to do is that, hey, you got to count your costs. You, yeah. you got to really see what this life is about wanting to be a part of the NBA and I think it's not just as a coach but any part of the NBA yeah. it's you know it is a committed position to where yeah. you have to find somebody to balance that or you're gonna have to find a different job it's taxing <laughs> it's taxing yeah for sure now so hats off to you for your commitment to the game and hats off to whoever this man wife gonna be who's gonna commit to the game too you know what I mean like yeah, good, okay, good luck man <laughs> Awesome, man. Um, so you've been blessed to, you know, it's always cool, man. I heard um, Phil Handy when he did the uh, All the Smoke, he was just talking about how he fell into these situations where Kobe, Kawhi, yeah. LeBron, yeah. Kyrie, where he was, you know, coaching good players, you know, some, some yeah. all-time players. And, um, you know, you're in a position where you work with Anthony Edwards, mm -hmm. you know, an up-and-coming uh, superstar, you know, in our eyes, um, the money they pay him shows him that he's a superstar, <laughs> at least, you know. Um, what's your experience like taking somebody with that much talent and honing in on their craft and what um, what attributes does he have that allows you to, you know, help him continue to develop his game? Yeah, and it's, and it's true what Phil said, man. I, I fall into, uh, you know, working with Ant. And at first, you know, he wasn't, you know, my guy, you know, what they say in terms of, uh, of, of, you know the uh, PD side of it, um, but then you know you start kind of seeing the growth and, and 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 kind of loving you know how we work together, and you know working with guys like that at that level, um, they're already talented, okay. So you know you have to, but you know they haven't mastered the game yet fully, mm -hmm. and so there's always room to grow. And again, the ball gives you that energy of you is you can't master it, so you know you have to grow within areas, and you know he's a he's a worker. And so, like, you know, we would wake up early in the morning, you know, get his work in, um, you know, come back to practice. He gets his work in again. After practice, he shoots. Um, and he had a – and when I first started working with him, you know, he hit me and, and, and told me, hey, man, and I, I want to work with you. And, you know, I said, all right, cool. Um, meet me in the gym uh, and, and uh, let's talk. And I said, meet me in the gym. And I'll see you soon, because he hit me up through text. I said, meet me in the gym. So I, I drive up there, and he fully in his practice get ready, waiting on me. And I'm like, no, we ain't working out. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk. And so uh, I asked him, man, I said, what do you want out of this game? Like, you want money? Like, that's fine. Like, I'm cool with that. You just want to get better, get money, that's fine. Uh, you want to win a championship? That looks different. Like, what do you want out of this game? And that dude said it, man. He said, I want to be the best shooting guard to ever play the game. Mm. And I said, hold on now, listen. <laughs> you know the best player to ever play the game was a shooting guard, right? And he was like, yeah. Sorry, who's the best player to play the game as a shooting guard? Come on, on, listen. I have to ask you. Let's not do this, man. I have to ask you. You know who the best player to ever play the game is. For me? Nah, you come on, we ain't going to do this right Dude, now. Dude, we, we have to. We have to because we may be on the same page. We may not be. There's two shooting guards that people talk about all the time. Yeah, and I know where I'm at. L.A., look, I love y'all, but we know Jordan's best. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, cool. Let's oh, man, we can breathe again. All right, all right bro. Oh, all right, okay. man, making sure. All right, all right and cool. there's no, no dude to disrespect to, to Kobe <laughs> nah. Brown. I love both of y'all. Yeah, bro. no, absolutely. Kobe, I think... Kobe my heart, and, and Brown, I've I, I worked with and known, so respect. Amen. Love. All right. 
But <laughs> Jordan is best ever played the game. All right. So anyway, um, that's what he said, man. And when he said that, I said, we got to put the work in to be that then. And that's going to probably be the work that we don't know what that looks like. Because mm. guess what? We've never been the best in the world. Mm. And so we continue to strive and, and, and build that as we do, you know, today. And, you know, it's little nuances. The first year was just cleaning everything up for him. Yeah. And just getting the fundamental cleanup down. Like, you know, what is your game look like? How do we polish it? How do we get it better? Talk about the fundamentals because I think it's extremely yeah. important. I always highlight that. What yeah. an NBA coach is telling one of the best up-and-coming players, what are the fundamentals? Just, just like, I mean, I mean the basics, you know, ball handling, shooting, um, angles of the court, yes. um, preparation, you know, fixing your base, fixing your shot pocket, um, finding spots on the floor where you're comfortable. Um, cleaning up your game of the fundamentals is mastering who you are as a player and putting in the sharpest form. Mm. Like, be as sharp as you can with who the hell you are. And that was the first year of cleaning the game up. The second year was adding things. Mm -hmm. So now we can add stuff because now we have a foundational base yeah. of, of, you know, different Euro finishes and skip steps. And, um, you know, this year right now, you know, you're probably going to see him post up a little bit more, playing off two. Mm. You probably might see him in the mid-range more than he should be, but he's polished that up now. Um, you know, and like last year we wanted him to get to the, to the rim at extreme rate, and he did that. Um, yeah. We still got to clean that up right. and make that, you know. Um, Using his body yeah, better. Use his body better, mm -hmm. finding different angles, different balance, type of yep. finishes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a progression. And I think, you know, you can't do every, every day at once. I, I tell players all the time, especially at that level and that caliber, when you add something, make sure the thing, is, the, the thing previously is finished. Don't add on your game and the other part ain't finished, bro. Master it. Master that first. If we got to go back to it, let's keep doing it until we get it right. And then once we do that, then we can grow from it. So uh, Would you tell a high school player that, though? Someone yeah. who is, you know, growing in the game. You'll tell them the same thing? Yeah, you have to. Because um, you try to take on too many things at once. Hey, I want to become a better shooter, passer, dribbler, boss. Yes, polish and work on your game as a total for real. Like, I, I respect that. But what is the one area of my game that I'm going to focus on to get myself better? And then I can move on from that and then grow from that. And, for example, I tell everybody this, man. Um, as a player, you already have your superpower. And a lot of people want to say, man, well, he's a shooter. He needs to figure out how to drive. I got to be a driver. Right. Oh, man. Oh, Bat Listen. Man. Batman did not try to be Superman. <laughs> no. Nope. He was Batman. Yeah. Be Batman. Yes. Don't try to be Superman and Batman. It, it doesn't work like that in the game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, my, my, my biggest thing to players is, man, you know, sharpening up. Sharpen up your superpower, man. Make your superpower stronger. And then you could, you can, yeah, you can still add tools and you can still add right. stuff to your game. But, uh, you know, I think it's just smart to, 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 to be a specialist. What about his mental maturity over time, right? Taking him, he, yeah. he, he has this dream, he has this vision. We all dream that, right? To be yeah. in the NBA, he accomplished that dream and now he had the bigger vision being the best shooting guard of all time. Right. Um, on the court, y'all have a, a plan, a process. Yeah, yeah. Off the court, what does that look like for somebody? Man, Ant, Ant has a great team around him, man. Um, you know, he has a guy in Atlanta who he works with sometimes in the summer when I'm not there who does a great job with him. Um, uh, then, you know, he has a great um, his, his, his foundation with uh, the people around him, you know, keep him, um, you know, really, like, you know, I want to say, like, um, really level-headed yeah. to where he doesn't get too, too big for himself. He's always, mm -hmm. you know, right there. Um, and they tell him the truth. And I like that. Yeah. Um, and so we have a good relate. I have a good relationship with those guys, and so that kind of works hand in hand with how he's, uh, you know, progressing and 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 the level of of you know his off the court mindset and stuff like that. Um, but man, from and you guys seen him? Everybody's you see his interviews. He's a funny dude, man. Yeah. What? He's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And he ain't lying. What mm -hmm. he says is for real. Like yeah. he ain't lying to you on camera. That is him. Mm -hmm. Papa, I mean he pop like I'll meet that chicken. But <laughs> he also is a guy like, okay, I get it. I'm gonna take care of my body a little bit better in terms of All eating right. right. Um and you know, but then he's twenty two, man. Like man, we forget that's crazy. We forget how young these guys are, man. He's still maturing, growing man, but I didn't I didn't turn to a man until I was twenty seven. Right, man, same. You know what I mean? Yep. So, um it's getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, of, of, but what I, what I love about the kid is the professionalism every year um, goes up 
just a tad more. And you can see the maturity. Like this year, man, just in, in the summer working with him, I was like, man, like you're a totally different kid than you were when you were in the league. And I love it because yeah. you're progressing in the right way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see, I think it, you said it earlier about reading body language when you were working with the, yeah. uh, the CBA team is that you can see it. I see him with the, um, the US, USA team, yeah. how he walks, how he carries himself on the court, yeah. the way he moves basketball wise. I'm like, oh. He's more mature. There's something. There's yeah. something that clicked different, yeah. Yeah. you know, that, or you know, built up over time. However you want to look at for it, sure. that oh man, he's he's getting better. He ain't getting worse. He ain't plateauing. That's for sure. Right. And um, I love that. And I think it's important, man. You brought up a good point. Um, I really highlight this to the families that I work with, with mm -hmm. the younger kids. Is having that brain trust is what I call it. The people around you mm -hmm. to help you stay humble and help you reach your goals. And making sure that they all are on the same page communication wise for sure you ain't tripping that he works with another trainer no nah, make sure you get his work, hey, get your work uh, yeah. uh he, his friends and family are on the same page keep him keep him humble keep him you know down to earth and then tell him the truth yep. and they ain't you know ain't i don't think there's anything you could do kid was you know yeah. top pick and right. all that now it's like hey keep going exactly. and keeping those right people around you and if there's somebody in his circle who is not like that yeah all them other people gonna tell you about it for sure. and get them out of that circle most likely for sure, for sure. and so i think that's super important to have that brain trust around you yeah it's the, it's the heart of these these guys man of what they are going to be and what they're going to become right like like you said man he has a guy he works with um half and half in the summer i'm with him half of the time you know keys with him half of the time um, but me and Key are on the same page. Yeah. And dude, guess what? I get this. I mean, dude, tired of hearing my voice sometimes. I see him every day. Yeah. Um, I work <laughs> with him every day. You yeah. Know, during the season and in the summertime. So it's like, I want you to go experience right. somebody. I want you to get. And 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 this is something that I think you know the basketball community has to get better with is sharing that. Yes. So go go get better. It's for it's for Ant to get better. It's not for. I mean, it's ain't for me. Yeah. Same for you kids, for him. So that's a uh, that's a thing that I think we have done very well in terms of gain a trust within our circle of that. Yes. Because again, it's the bigger picture of getting the kid better. That's it. And that's what we all have to be, you know, accountable for at all times. Yeah. You know what I mean? You and Phil highlighted that at the the clinic. Right. You guys, the the first session was you guys working together mm -hmm. and showing that hey, two people who are mm -hmm. different places, but whatever it is yeah. you guys worked with the same players and the respect and um also the assistance that mm -hmm. you guys provided one another mm -hmm. working off each other on the court and i think that um it was just amazing to show um i appreciate that and um yeah man that's that's the next level stuff yeah. and um i, I do want to talk about that because I, that's how we connected is yeah. um i guess you know our mentors you right. know uh chris is one of my mentors in basketball you have phil and chris mm -hmm. um Talk about that, how they helped you develop maybe your training style and the philosophies that you train with and, you know, how you took it and you make it your own. What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, those dudes have been pivotal in my growth, um, you know, so, you know, I appreciate appreciate those dudes, man, with, you know, with everything in me because uh, if it wasn't for them, man, I would probably be a little bit behind, you know, on my, my, my schedule, man. And, but, you know, you constantly learn from coaches, you know, I learned from my coaches on my staff in Minnesota. I learned from my coaches um, outside of this, and we sharpen each other. Um, we, you know, the interesting thing, I was thinking about this uh, when I was at the camp, with the, um, the camp we were just at, and we're not doing anything different than any other. Like, we're going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We'll teach you how to dribble. <laughs> we'll teach you how to finish. Mm -hmm. We'll teach you how to do floaters, shoot the mid-range, go, go go down the line and teach you the game. It's the way you teach it. It's how you teach it. Yeah. It's the structure and how you put it together that it translates to the player and it's actually getting real results. Yes. And so what they did is provided a blueprint, and you know the blueprint, mm -hmm. of a pattern on how we teach the game that makes sense. It's almost like a, a, a five-course meal. I tell everybody like a five-course meal in Europe. You know, you get your little tea, you wash it, cleanse your palate. That's level one, mm -hmm. right? And level two is you get your appetizer. Well, that's finishing. That could be floaters. That could be whatever. The main course comes out. That's where we get that real work in, that dog work in. We build mm -hmm. it out, right? And then you got your little, little small little drink again, cleanse your palate of four. 
And then the fifth level is, you know, your dessert, which is could be threes, could be whatever you got to do. But you constantly build that up within, you know, a, a, a formula to build a player instead of being sporadic. Yeah, you know, I've seen, you know, P, you've seen it too. Hey, they go from ball handling to shooting threes. Well, hold on, we forgot a whole space in the floor. Mm-hmm. We ain't worked. We ain't worked out in. Like, what's going on? And so, um, yeah, like again, the blueprint of formula um, has never had me lost. It's like a file cabinet, man. I, get, I just pull the file out. I can go into any setting, right, and run a session. Easy. Like I don't. No I have no fear of like. Hey, you got two hundred kids, bet. Cool. <laughs> I know exact. I know exactly what to do cool. because cool. of the system exactly. and that setting. And I think that's important for co- coaches tap in to these coaches who are doing it at a high level. Um, I don't know if you like people reach out to him, but reach out to him, uh, reach out to Phil, reach yeah, out to Chris, sure. reach out to. There's a bunch of trainers out there who are doing it the right way, who have systems you could just subscribe to, man. It costs sure. you a little bit of money to get a lot of information. Agreed. And. Agreed. Um, do this thing the right way because we're all trying to build you know we all trying to build the next nba player the ones that are on our level we trying yeah. to get I'm, I, that's what i'm doing i'm trying to build nba players right. and hopefully you know that's going to lead them to college and yeah. uh other opportunities in life yeah. but i did it because i learned the blueprint I'm, i don't it don't change it has yeah, not changed and 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 all of that t man one of the things man that, that we have to really be um cognizant about is like we're the staples of it the coaches are Mm-hmm. If we don't know how to do it, how do we expect the players to become better? And I think right now America is you know, behind in the system now. The world is caught up. Mm-hmm. I mean, the top five best players in the NBA, if we could just list them, they're European or not from our country. Mm-hmm. Jokic, Luka, Embiid, Giannis, that's four guys right there who are just, you know, you could say – yeah, you can ar- arguably top five, or yeah, top five. Yeah, for sure. For Where sure. are we? And it's our feeder system mm-hmm. of how we're teaching and training you guys. We're not playing outside anymore. You don't see kids outside playing. You see kids in the gym training now. So that means we have to elevate our level of training so now we can get back to where it's not even playing field again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's that's a word for y'all. Uh, <laughs> it's real. Talk. What you're saying about that is, uh, I think, super important for us to hear, just coming together as a community. I think this this is what this platform is for, yeah. is so the people who are trying to make an impact on this game hear from the ones who are at, you know, who have experience in this game and are developing the top level of talent. Mm-hmm. But also, I got guys who run club teams coming to this and mm-hmm. how they're having success with developing players. And at the end of the day, yes, this is the driver, but at the end of the day, it's about uh, developing people, sure. developing people. Um, I know you talk about being a lot, right? Yeah. Your, your be uh, yeah. is kind of just that word. Yeah. Um, if you talk about that a little bit and what yeah. that means to your life. Yeah, man, I, I, I live off of it. Um, you know, the, the, the word be um, has, has, it is the beginning of so many beautiful words. Mm-hmm. Point. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're becoming all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You have to, you know, believe. You know, you have you you, um, you can't belittle yourself. Like, there's so many powerful words in that one word because it's a constant form of evolving. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I use it and I live by it when I teach. I use it and I live by it every day for myself. I use it and I live by it, you know, with my family. And so, I think um, it's something that you can hold on and reminder of. Of, of, of things that, you know, that's not only important to you, but it's a constant reminder of pushing forward within a positive way. Yeah. yeah. So. No, awesome, man. I appreciate that. I remember when you first explained that to me a few years ago, man. It was, and uh, your posts always have that reminder of it. And it's right. like, man, that's, that's dope how the word, the impact of words. Sure. Something so small of B, two letters B-E, yeah. but be that. Yeah. are the root of everything else that you do and can make that impact so now we're gonna move to the next uh segment of our our program here our program our show excuse me y'all uh my rushmore okay your mount rushmore and uh you know what he wanted to change it up today we're going to do the top four foods 
What's your Mount Rushmore foods? Man? Mount Rushmore foods. So you talk to me first. What's, what's nah, your? No, nah, no, nah. I, I want to influence you, man. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, you ain't gonna influence me, man. I'm, <laughs> yo, I'm simple dude, man. I like me yeah. some. Uh, all right, my top four: shrimp enchiladas. Okay. It's not in any order, but gotcha. they would still them, be number one. Put them up. <laughs> shrimp enchiladas. Yeah. Uh, man, donuts. I ain't gonna front. They're yeah, my weakness. Yeah, inner fat boy. In you, I got an inner fat boy in me, man. I, I go and hoop right after I eat them every time. But I gotta have a donut every. My pops used to get us donuts right before the barbershop yeah. growing up, Love and so that. it's like literally every Saturday or Sunday. We well, did donut. The donut shop. Well, did donut. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm about to get a donut after this. Uh, number three, sushi. Okay. Albacore. Yeah. Spicy albacore, oh. preferably or albacore belly. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's my my uh, my fancy side, I want to say, with the sushi. And number four, man, my wife makes this dish, so I don't eat chicken anymore. Okay. Uh, just digestive restrictions uh, for my life, but she made this chicken dish. Yeah. Low key, the reason I married her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, she puts a little yeah, bread on and a little sauce, and yeah. she used to cook it all the time. And then I proposed to her. And then she only cooked it on my birthday. Is she smart? Yeah, she caught me. She's she smart. caught me. I, I love you, babe. Right and you know, if I could ever eat chicken again, I love that man. She's a smart woman, right there. Yeah, yeah. What you got? Hey, well, I've been all over the world eating. Um, I love Caribbean food, man. Uh, Caribbean uh, food is with rice and peas and jerk chicken. Oh boy, <laughs> oxtail. You get all that right there. Okay, I'm doing that. I'm from the south. So it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a mixture of like the southern cuisine, you know, soul food, you know, with some barbecue in there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A little cookout at the get the crib. Yep. Got to do that. Um, I'm starting to do this. I'm starting to get into this Italian phase right now. Like, man, really? What? Yeah, I'm loving this Italian food right now. Okay. Man. So for some reason, I'm cooking a lot of <laughs> pastas and. and like, what is this? I don't even eat. You, you drinking wine at the same time too? Oh, it's, it's a must. Oh, there you it's go. See, that's what it is. That's you, a must. You're in your... And then I'm gonna throw a curveball, man. I'm gonna say I had a dish in China that that I love. And if you ever been to China, it's really hard to eat out there. Okay. Cause, it's yeah, just so different. Cause no, they eat every, anything that walk and breathe, they gonna kill it and eat it. I'm just gonna let you know, they they don't care. Oh, that's that's a for real thing. Oh, that's real. Oh, I did not know that. But okay. they have this. Like, she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> anything that walks, <laughs> anything that moves, they will eat. Wow. So it's crazy out there. But they have this this dish, it's a hot pot. I don't ever you ever, ever ate a hot pot before? Uh don't think so. I mean I don't know. So hot pot is, is a broth that they, they boil. And, okay. And it's a big flavorful broth. You can get it spicy, you can get it bold. Like ramen? It. Yeah, kind of. So you okay. can you put your noodles in there if you want and you take it out, you eat it, but you uh um you have vegetables and you have different proteins. And you put it in this broth, you let it cook, take it out, eat it. You can just like a buffet. Hmm. And it's one of the most firest things I've had, man. Wow. Do they yeah. have it anywhere out here in the U.S.? Yeah, you know what? The U.S. is they're popping up like crazy now. Okay. And it's so, called a hot pot. Yep. You just type it in your phone, hot pot, close the hot pot. There's going to be one around here. Oh, I'm going to check yeah. it out. Yeah, it's pretty fire. That's dope. It's, and so what's the weirdest thing you ate then in China? Well, you know what? I don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like, I saw animals out there that I didn't know exist. Like, they got some stuff out there, man. <laughs> Um, next one is uh, where were you when? So we're going to take you back to a moment in basketball history yeah. that was impactful in your life, um, and where were you when it happened? So uh, MJ, game six last shot. in Utah, should have been his last shot. Shouldn't have been. Well, it was his last shot of his career in Chicago. That's what I like to say. Yeah. Um, with the crossover, a yeah. little hip push. We ain't gonna talk about it, but there was a little hip nudge, but hey, that's man. part of the game. Hey, we in the park, you ain't calling that. Right, yeah. right. And uh, pull up, right. here's his money shot. Yep. He knew um, the spot he was getting to. So I'm sitting there, we started it with my cousin, man, him helping, I was sitting there with both of them, my cousins, watching the game at their crib. And at the time, for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't, I didn't want him to win. So I was like, man, he keep winning all the time. He keep dominating. Like somebody else win. Like yeah. I wanted to see Utah win, but as I'm watching this series, I'm watching this great. I'm like, he gotta win. Like he go win. <laughs> why am I going against this dude? Like why am I going against this dude? 
and yeah. you know he, he pushes off and he gets his shot off and he holds that pose. And I remember just sitting on the couch, just like clenching the seat, and like, dang, he hit that shot. He walked back and boom. And it was the whole thing of it, right? He stole the ball. Yes. He goes down, like the whole big picture of it. And man, I went outside, probably did that move at least 300 times, man. It was the same move, same yeah. move, same move, man. I held the pose and probably missed most of them, mm -hmm. but I held that pose. Right. Man. And Made you uh, feel like Mike for a little man, bit. You feel like I, if I could be like Mike, that was my be like Mike moment. Yeah. That was, that was actually my entry point into basketball. Wow. Yeah, yeah I didn't start playing until I was 11, 12. Yeah. And um, that was, I think, the first finals that I paid attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, before I probably, I think I watched, but didn't really pay, like know what I was looking at. Yeah. And uh, I just remember like my dad and family kind of going crazy when he did it. I sat, I think I sat in awe, just like, yo, he, he, that was yeah. crazy, because I'm literally just getting introduced to the game. Yeah, he, 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 did, he did things like that. that and the, yeah, Cole, yeah, Cole. Cole. Every time you watch it, it's just like, that's He's Mike. That he, he, the best shooting guard of all time. <laughs> He's him. Are you with us? Okay. But, uh, <laughs> no. All right. Here's the fun part of the interview. We like to flip the script. Yep. You become the interviewer. Um, and uh, two questions. It can be about anything. Anything, anything. Man, I want you to talk to me about, just give me two keys about being married for 10 years. Like, that's just 10, 10 years, ten. brother. Yeah, longest commitment of my life. Let's talk about that. I need two um, of them, I need two. <laughs> All right, you need two. Key number one, is for me, my marriage is God has to be the center. Got you. Sure. With with that helps knowing that God is the center is knowing that only God can change people. Mm. So any change that's gonna happen with my wife, I can't control it. That's deep. It's in God's hands. And yeah. we both know that very well. And so we don't hold each other to the expectations of our like of what we want. It's not. It's who she is. This is who I am. And if right. God's going to change us, because if both of us keep God first and surrender to him, mm -hmm. God's going to continue to develop us and change us. Love that. And so that's number one is just keeping God first so we can have the correct expectations for one another, which that leads into a whole lot. Like most divorces happen because expectations are not being fulfilled. Right. Um, number two is, if I have to give you the best two. Man, we don't argue. I ain't gonna lie, we just don't argue. Yeah. Um, we've actually, this last week, since we've gotten 10 years, mm -hmm. was two weeks ago, we've probably been in the most disagreements mm -hmm. in that amount of time ever. Really? Yeah, it's, and stupid stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, you didn't hear me to get the, the kid's iPad? Stupid yeah. stuff. Right. But our rule is this, if we ain't gonna divorce over it, we ain't gonna argue about it, period. Love that. So we have nothing to talk about. There's really? nothing to argue about. Right. We have disagreements and how we communicate with one another during those disagreements uh, are very good. I, um, I, I, she's a very gentle and quiet person, unless you make her mad, but mm -hmm. she's yeah. very gentle. Yeah. Like, it, and it takes a lot to make her mad. Right. She's just very, very gentle. And um, I'm very direct, yeah. abrasive, you know, kind of when I talk, just kind of how I was raised. And um, so I'm very aware of how I speak to her. Yeah. I take a deep breath before I talk, and um, my I, I never we have never. Uh, she told me she went to bed mad one time, yeah. one time. But I woke up in the middle of the night and, and uh, made sure she wasn't mad anymore. But we just make sure we don't go to bed mad. I apologize, like yo, really realize, and I'm not like a fake apology to smooth things over. I'm like, man, let me reflect, cause yo, man, people die in their sleep, right? For sure. And Life one thing, short. one thing, God told me when I married her was, you better love this woman. Ooh, I'm about to get emotional. Dang, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you, hey, man, you need to start a little, a little Oprah show yeah, or something. You know, I, I do this. <laughs> Told me to love that woman like every day like it's her last day. Love that. Yeah. And so I love her. I, I won't. That's it. She's my favorite love song. That Isley Brothers. Living for the love of you, man. Mm -hmm. hey. Living for the love of you. Hey, I'm about to listen to that. That's a good one. <laughs> Cue the music. <laughs> All right. Uh, Second one, second question. Huh? Let me let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, what? What? Okay. Yeah. So, from your perspective, 
um, with me being in the NBA, what would you like to see NBA coaches or high-level coaches give back to the youth or give back to communities? Like, what would you like to see in that in terms of how we can help and do better? I think the kids need to see the level of commitment from the players. Mm -hmm. So showing what Anthony Edwards is going through. Yeah. They need to see that. They need to see the journey. Because right now we live in a highlight world yeah. where all they see is the result. Right. They don't know the hours, blood, sweat, and tears that he's putting into it. Right. And so this, where you're just talking about the yeah. experience, right? And um, going back, the coaches clinic, right? right? And giving the coaches the information they need mm -hmm. to... Um, build these players so America could get, could get back where we supposed to be in this basketball world. Man, right. We we invented this. Yeah. <laughs> we invented this. Right. We didn't invent soccer. Right. You know, we invented a lot of these sports. This we invented, and so we supposed to be leading the charge yeah. always. And so, um, as many ways like this content of the work, yeah. the process, um, and the truth mm -hmm. about what all the stuff that's negative about this basketball stuff right. is doing, you know, the highlight generation, the skills train. So this is why I call some people skills trainers. I also call the people player developers. Right. Player developers are the ones who are invested into the craft to make you a player. Agreed. Skills trainers can teach you how to dribble. Yep. That don't mean they know how to teach you basketball. Somebody could teach you how to shoot, right. but they'll not teach you the game. And so more player development focus, curriculums, resources that um, that are, what I want to say, are intriguing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Make yeah. it just like somebody does the Instagram video. Yo, how to see Heinz video. Sure. Yo, I'm working with, with, with Ant. This is what we're doing. Right. And how did you get here? Right. You know, and giving that information, I think. The information, right? Without without uh, knowledge, my people perish. Yeah, for That's sure. It. So for we sure. need that huge, knowledge. Huge. Awesome. Um, so you got a twenty four second shot clock. Speak to the people uh, mm -hmm. about anything you want, man. Anything I want. I don't got much to say to y'all. Uh, <laughs> no, man. First of all, it's a pleasure having me. Appreciate Thank that. You. It's you, love man. for real. Love. Um, man, no, nah, just look. Everybody out there in the world, be blessed. Stay blessed. Be kind. Be kind. Love. I right, just love, love each other. And, you know, we, like you said, man, we're not here for a long time, so why not have fun doing it and doing it with a, with a great heart, good spirit. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show, man. Yes, sir. Sure. Yep. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.